I'm Melissa Muir. Today I'm going to show you how to use the new Arbor Press by Potter USA. I'm going to show you a couple of different tools that he has that are available for that and then a couple of different possibilities with working with it. This is the Arbor Press that's offered by Potter USA and it's just one that's been modified a little bit to accept different types of tooling. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach our bottom plate to this. So I'm just going to lift up the arbor here. It is magnetic, it's very strong. So I just like to position this where I want it. I am going to make certain that this part has a little extra room out here that kind of hangs over the base of the arbor press. I'm also going to kind of pull this forward so that it rests here on my bench. Now it's very important that your arbor press be supported. Otherwise you're going to be wearing this on your foot and it will not feel good, I guarantee it. So because I'm not totally ready to commit this to a permanent spot in my studio, for now I'm going to just take a large C-clamp, this is a four inch one, and I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to secure it starting back here, kind of in the back of my plate so that it doesn't get in the way of anything that I'm doing and just secure it to my tabletop that way. So everything is good and secure. Next thing, there is a handle that will come with this and it has a fitting on the side of it. I actually don't like to put this back on. By not putting this on after I've inserted the handle, it allows me to readjust the position of my handle as I'm working on different projects, which is actually kind of nice. So I'm going to open this up a little bit, bring in the handle, and it just fits into the gears that are on the back side of our arbor here. And this allows us to then move this up and down. It's very, very simple. So the different tools that are available, Kevin has had a plate soldered onto this or a little bar and it does have magnets on it so that it will hold various tooling. So the first one that I'm going to show you, we have some little mini uh, anti-clastic and synclastic forms. These are going to be great for things like small bracelets, say a children's bracelet or some earrings or any number of different types of smaller applications that you might want to use. So in this case, I'll do a synclastic form. I'm just going to bring this in and attach it. Like I said, there's just a little magnet that's right here. I have a small piece of urethane. And in this case, I have, I've prepared a couple of little forms in sterling silver. I have it patterned. And the thing that's really nice about this is that I'm able to go through and create a synclastic form without having to hammer on a on, on the stake. And so I have no risk whatsoever of losing my pattern that's on here, which is kind of nice because it is a lighter pattern. But I want to make certain that this is on the outside of my piece. So I'm going to start with it face down onto my urethane. So then what I will do is just bring this down, center everything up, and then you're just going to give it a nice little squeeze. This is going to require some muscle strength. And again, make sure everything is all lined up. Again, give a squeeze. Line everything up. Squeeze again. So on and so forth. But you can kind of see now that I'm getting this nice curve into my piece. Let's see if I can bring this up here for you a little bit. You can see everything is concave inside of here. It's forming beautifully and like I said I don't have to worry about it ruining my texture or anything like that. Now the same concept would apply with the anti-clastic. You would just bring this anti-clastic piece in, bring your piece down, and then you would do the same type of forming. Now if you find that maybe you need a little extra pressure or things just aren't in the right position, you can take out your handle rotate it down a little bit and then maybe now I can give some extra pressure down this way if it happened to have been up a little too far. Now another type of tool that he offers are these square and round mandrel bits. They have a groove that goes down the ends of these. This allows you to bring this in, get it onto your plate and there is a forming block that also goes with this. Place this in here, get this into position, and now I'm ready to begin bending. One of the things that I really like about this, 
is that it's an open here. So I can have a bracelet that is already soldered and I can bring this in, line things up where I want them to be. In this case, I've already created a mark. Everything is lined up where I want it to. And all I need to do now is just bend this down. This happened to have been 10 gauge sterling silver. So we're talking pretty thick. And it puts in this nice little bend right here in the corner for me. And I would continue to do this on each of my four points. And then I'm able to make this into a square bracelet or something else like that. Another thing that you could do with this, and one of the uses that this will actually have in my studio, is for creating boxes. This is a break, a bending break. And it's nice and wide, it's several inches long. So I have a good sized box that I can form just by bringing my metal into this and giving the break. The round option works very similarly. There are two rounded grooves here on my block, a little larger or shallower, and then a little deeper groove. So again, I would just bring my round part in here, line everything up, and then you just bring your metal in, and very similarly, you're just going to give this a squeeze, move it around, give it another squeeze, and you can see how easily you can create some curves into your metal this way. So this is a great tool that's going to be nice in my studio for creating some different things. Like I said, I'm going to be doing some boxes, um, maybe even some box bales, so square bales, and this is a great tool for me in that respect. And again, even the smaller dies for creating the anti-clastic and synclastic forms. So that's the Arbor Press in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed it, and go get one, because they are fun.